Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, so another um, insect that we just got to be mindful for is borer. So this this tree did get attacked by borer. So you can kind of see that there's a trunk here. So the borer went in um, and disrupted the sap flow. It started eating all inside. And what, so what you'll see with the borer is there'll be sawdust down at the base of your tree or on the branches near where the borer is. And so that borer goes in and like the name suggests, it bores into the plant and it starts to take the sap sort of flow. So if you're getting dieback, if you're getting a branch or your trunk is, is dying, you're watering it and it's um, no matter what is helping it, check to see if there's any sawdust around your plant, it may be a borer. So it's stopping the sap flow. So everything above the, where the borer is or uh, further away from you know the trunk. Uh, so the borer splits it. So anything on the outside edge of that borer will dry off and die because it's not getting any, any sap. So no nutrients, no water. Um, so you want to, you can use a little bit of wire or, or something that you can stick in that hole and, and poke the um, borer with. Um, but you want to prune them out as well. So un unfortunately, if you get a borer right on near your graft union um, and it, it kills the top bit of, of your tree, then you can lose you know, a grafted plant very quickly uh, from a single, single borer um, coming in. Uh, so there is exclusion um, tools that we can use. So um, we can put nets over our trees um, and this would protect like fruit flies and a lot of uh, insect uh, pests that may be going for foliage. Uh, it's not going to protect us so much against the borers. They're going to come from the soil. Um, ants farming aphids may be um, a common site. Uh, so they're not going to be protected by a net. So what we can do is we can put a trunk exclusion around that. So there is um, paste, I believe, that you can put on. Um, the paste should be... Uh, porous like aerating uh, so if we put on like petroleum jelly that cuts off the uh, air to the bark and everything we can kill uh, our plant so there is special gels that we can put on and there is tapes and material that we can put on to exclude uh, borers going up the trunk and ants going up and and uh, farming on the trunk too so ants will farm mealy bugs uh, aphids and those kind of those kind of sap sucking insects um, but so the biggest thing is um, protecting that new growth until it's hardened off, uh, feeding it, and making sure that it's got plenty of um, moisture when it when it needs. Uh, they are forest plants, so the, as much as possible, if we can mimic their natural forest. So this means uh, we would like a potting mix or a soil if we're working naturally that has a high fungal dominant dominance so we want a higher level of fungal organic matter to bacterial organic matter in our potting mix or in our soils so we want it looking like a forest floor there should be mycelium it should have fungi i'm growing if you're doing it naturally that'll balance it all out it's basically their forest plants they need full sun to get the most um fruiting the flowers are on the tips the fruit ripen um, up in the sun so we're not going to get a lot of fruit set in the inner in woods of the tree so only where the sun kind of can can shine we're going to get um, better better crop that's why keeping a citrus down smaller that two by two is um, really effective because we're keeping a smaller footprint of a tree but keeping as maximum surface area to the sun so maximizing fruiting um, so six hours of sun a day, smaller tree, they can be hedged. Um, they can be trained like uh, across espaliered, across a wall. Um, it's just really protecting that new growth, making sure that they're fed, watered. So if, if we're growing then not naturally, if we're using chemicals in our growing, then you know there'll be a citrus, specialized citrus fertilizer or fruit and flowering fertilizers. Um, and you'd have to care a little bit more about your pH. So you're going to be wanting an acidic soil. And what the acidic is telling us is basically that it's a fungal dominated soil. Fungus use acidic enzymes to break down woody 
material in the soil. So when a plant says, well, when we're looking at the plant uh, profile and it's telling us that it wants a pH of six or 6.5 or so, it's saying that it's slightly acidic. It's a fungal dominated soil, a slightly fungal dominated soil. And we can go down to like, you know, five and a half, which is a heavily, heavy, old growth, fungal dominated soil. So most of the fruit trees that we're growing with, or well, most of the fruit trees that we're gonna be growing, you know, in food forest systems in the subtropics, they're gonna be fungal dominated species. They're going to want lots and lots of woody, woody material in there in the soil. Um, so wood chip mulch, make sure they're covered, make sure that we're not having lots of plants around them competing so grasses are not friends of citrus. Lots of wood chip and foresty ground covers, ground cover plants. They do not like grass around them or any other plant that uh, also is a heavy surface feeder. So things that we could be putting around citrus that would be beneficial would be basils, would be chives, oregano, mint, um, marigolds, tansies, and many, 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 many more. Brazilian spinach and so there's lots of things that you can play with. But that's just a real general basics on citrus. If you have any more questions, ask and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much. Peace.